the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. We're also gonna be covering the Google Pixel 9 and the 9 Pro, but the one I've been using primarily and the one I'm sure you've been using primarily is the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. Now, let me just say that I have always been a fan of the visor design, right? Because it's very unique. You don't see anything else like it. So we, we've had it for the past few generations. Now, Google, understandably wanted to you know change things up because it's been the same design you know relatively speaking for the past three years so now they've gone for a similar visor but it's kind of like this cutout which again i i actually like right now because of its flatter edges a lot of people are comparing it to the iphone they're saying okay google's going you know iphone style with all of the flat edges and stuff i mean as i said there are only so many ways that you can redesign a a, a, a block of uh, glass and metal pretty much yeah. what it is one thing I will say is, um, I don't know why Google have done this, but like, so they've gone for a matte finish on the back of the Pixel 9 Pro XL, but with a glossy frame. And the Pixel 9 has a glossy back with a, uh, with a, a matte frame. Now, me personally, I would like matte on matte, right? Okay, I just get lots of fingerprints and smudges over the frame. And we also saw like, you know, Apple obviously went for the matte finish with the titanium uh, with the iPhone 15 Pro Max last year. And even the Pixel Fold, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold, it has a matte back with matte frame. You know, matte all over is 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 the way to go, I think. Um, I think they kind of have this, you know, this sort of uh, glossy look to kind of make it look a bit more premium. But I think in actual fact, after you use it for a few days and you have all these smudges and fingerprints, it looks less premium than a matte finish. What, so that's what my color do you have design. again? I have uh, the, is it, is it, what would you call it? The Pearl Pearl White? Porcelain, yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. really, I don't, I guess I haven't really paid attention to the fingerprints on the, I, I know it would show more on the, on the black version, yeah, but, uh, I mean. I don't know, I say matte on matte. So that's the first thing with the design. I like the design, I like the visor, but in my opinion, matte on matte. Would you agree? Okay. I um, mean, yeah, I agree. Matte on matte makes the most amount of sense. I do like the updated uh, uh, visor here. It reminds me of Cyclops from X-Men um, <laughs> more and more. But I think design overall is pretty solid. I get the comparisons to the iPhone, but as I've said, I mean, if you guys want to compare, go ahead and design a phone and show me something different. And then, you know, we can go from <laughs> there. Um, this thing. It's tough. Yeah, I think what I do appreciate is the premium feel to it. I'm not saying the finish might be premium or not. So when you hold it, it feels like, okay, I've got something something pretty mm. solid on here. One thing about the, the Pixel 9 Pro XL is, that I do like is that it's, even though it's bigger, it's not as big as the Note. For me, which is fine, because the Note, I still like that size, but it does feel a little bit more comfortable for people who might want to get above the Pixel 9 Pro and want something slightly bigger, but not too big, um, you know, in terms of design. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I think is quite appreciative is some of the, some of the camera features, you know, some of those, AI camera features, which I'm sure we will see on other Android devices down the line. You know, like the Add Me, which is, you know, which if you're lonely, you can create yourself as friends um, in, <laughs> in a photo or, or, you know, those kind of things I think are pretty nice uh, features. But it kind of brings up that main question is, what is a photo anymore? You know, we've talked about it before. And I think Marquez has talked about it. Like every time you take a photo on a smartphone, it's already not really the photo you took because there's so much processing in the background. Now that you're inserting yourself into a photo wherever you can, is that yeah, I mean, really a photo? While on the features of like, so for example, add me, I think that's a brilliant feature. I mean, there's been lots of situations where, you know, just literally the other day, um, we just Google photo memories. My niece shared a picture of the family and she was just like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm the one bloody taking the photo. <laughs> That's why I'm not in the photo, you know what I mean? And I was yeah. like, you know what? If you had the ad me, again, you don't have to carry a tripod around, you don't have to take an awkward selfie, you just do that. And you know what? I'd say results are nine out of 10, I would say, right? They're not perfect. Yeah. Obviously, if you pixel peep, you're gonna see some, maybe some issues here and there. But generally speaking, the results are very usable and they're very, very good, right? And I think that's something that's a really, really good feature. And, you know, like reimagine, okay, I think that's a, that's a bit of like, you know, like where you can literally change the sky, you're like, you can change mm -hmm. all of these things in the picture. And then that really tells you what is a photo. Now, with this, I've kind of found that, you know, depending, certain situations, it can work really well. Certain situations, it can be like, okay, it's, it's, uh, it's not doing the best job here. It's a little bit off here, but it is quite fun to use, right? 
Um, but the other AI, AI features like Pixel Studio, okay, you can just generate images on the fly, right? Now this, mm -hmm. personally, I found myself, I used it for a little bit. <laughs> it's like generate, I was like, uh, T-Rex um, on Mars roaring, right? Okay, and then it's like, boom, and it's like, oh, this is so cool, right? And then you do it for a bit, and then after a bit, you're just kind of like, okay, cool. Um, it's just how much will you use it, right? Okay, yes, it's fun to do here and there, but it's not something that I would use personally on a daily basis, but it is, it's fun, it's different. Um, yeah. You've got other AI features like obviously video boost when you're taking videos, it kind of like processes it in the cloud and just makes it pop a lot more, it gives it a lot, you know, dynamic range boost and stuff. That's again, brilliant. But my question is, here's the thing, cause like a lot of these pixel features come out and then maybe a few months or even a year later, they, they kind of roll out to other devices because a lot of this stuff happens in the cloud, right? A lot of this processing and stuff happens in the clouds, which means technically you don't need a powerful device to do it. You could just have any device. So like, for example, Magic Eraser on uh, on Google, right? Now you've pretty much got it on, you know, any any device that has Google Photos app on there, right? You can go in and you can edit, right? And what was, what was funny as well is like last year, you know, when you had best take, that's something that mm -hmm. I actually didn't find myself using at all. Like I was like, oh, this is cool but then I just didn't use it, right? But I was I was doing it on pictures that I had taken on my iPhone, basically. So then I had pictures in my archive like that I take on the iPhone and I was like, oh, okay, I can just go into the Google Photos app and I can just do it. So you don't necessarily have to take it on a Google phone, right? Okay, and yeah. this is where it's like, okay, uh, you know, because a lot of the AI features that they were showing, or well, some of the AI features they were showing on the actual keynote, they were on the Samsung. So it's just like, okay, this is cool, but how, how long is this going to stay just the pixel only feature and you know are we going to get it on others i think we will no I, I agree i think it's going to come really soon i think at least the first sign we'll see will be the s25 you know they're going to have a bunch of features where if they want to maybe rebrand a certain feature that they like kind of like circle to search remember that was also that's been a feature technically on pixel devices it wasn't really a circle feature but they reframed it and you know now everybody knows it because it's on the Samsung device right and I think that's what's going to happen but to me what this says tells me and I think we talked about this like you know uh, off camera was that I feel like this is the beginning of the end of the pixel especially just the fact that at the pixel event you had them showing demos on Samsung devices on Motorola Razr devices of you know, mm. a lot of these AI features um, before they announced the Pixel. I found that really odd for a Pixel, yeah. you're inviting people to a Pixel event and then you're showing, you're not even showing it on the, you know, Pixel 8 or Pixel 7, right? You could show it on previous devices, but you're showing it on that. And to me, that, that says, mm. is Google telling us that maybe the Pixel becomes this launch of just early and then it's like, you know, we're flowing to other devices immediately and less focus on the pixel and it might just be a much more condensed, I don't, I mean, I don't know, I'm just speculating here. Um, I, don't, I don't know, I, I mean, there's two sides to that, I think, right? Because there's firstly, I, I agree, that is quite, quite odd, like for them to do that and show what the device is at their keynote, right? Now, I think there's one of two things. One is either that eventually they're gonna retire the pixel line, right? Okay, maybe the pixel 10 will be the next pixel, the last pixel, I don't know, but, the other side, which I think is most likely, is that they're trying to show, because look, Google at the end of the day is a software company, right? Okay. And they want to show off these features and they want to kind of say that, hey, look, these features are also on other devices, right? Because they want to push those features. However, the Pixel is kind of the one that all of these work on. And they're like, this is, this is the showcase. And then you start seeing them roll across all of these other devices and stuff like that. Plus, the other thing is Gemini Live, right? Okay. Yeah. It's a subscription service, right? It's going to be a subscription service. How much is it? Like 20 bucks a month or something like that? 20. Right? Yeah, 20 dollars. Okay. Now, again, I think this is something that they also want to push because guess what makes you more money than just here? Here's, let me sell you this device for this much. Goodbye. You know, all good. Nah. You know, it's 2024. Every Tom, Dick and Harry, whoever it is, is trying to put you into a subscription because they want a consistent... Uh, income, right? They want yeah. you to keep, you know, I, I've got some plugins on uh, um, uh, my Adobe suite, right? Which I only use as like, I don't want any updates on this whatsoever. I just want what I have right now. I don't care if you're going to have new effects <laughs> or anything. I don't want them. But guess what? The only thing I can do is a subscription. It's just like, I hate the whole subscription model. But guess what? That's just the way things are going, right? That's just the way things are going. Now for Pixel, like Google in general, I think they're going to go down this um, route of, okay, we're still got this Pixel one stuff, but 
if they've got millions of other people from all these, their, their ecosystem of Android subscribing and giving 20 bucks a month, right? That is a huge, huge boost of revenue. So I think that's one of their areas. That's, that's what they're trying to push. Oh yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think that is a mainstay for it. Now with Gemini Live, it is good like on a conversational model, it's, it's actually quite good. I just think that it's sometimes it's a bit overconfident in some answers and they're completely wrong. And I still think that's just the case with a lot of AI, but so generally speaking, I, have it's you, been, it's have, been you used, good. have you used Gemini and have you found that it can correct itself? Because that's the one thing I did like with ChatGPT and I experienced it. I've experienced it live with like my wife and other people and even that bartender where he understands English, but he can't really speak English well. And he said something and he started saying it. He's like, mm. and I said, ChatGPT, why did you say that? And he went back and he came, he just immediately corrected without saying I'm correcting myself. And then he was like, yeah, 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 this is much better. So okay. that, that I found really I've, interesting. I've no experience, that. I've no experience that yet, but I mean, it is, it is good. Would I pay 20 bucks a month for it? Probably not, um, if I'm honest with you. Um, for the for the Gemini Live and stuff, I probably wouldn't uh, right now anyway in its current form, but um, it is pretty interesting. Now let's talk about some of the other elements of the Pixel because it's, it is mm -hmm. although the kind of focus is on AI, but there are, there are other things. I think the display is really good, beautiful, yeah, um, brighter. Uh, it's you know the bezels are uniform, it's really good. But I think the biggest thing that I personally like is the fact that we've now got an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner instead of optical. We've had optical fingerprint scanners on the Pixel for the past few years. And although they're okay, they're not the fastest out there. And the, you know, like it's just sometimes it will just won't read your fingerprint. You have to do it a few times. Whereas the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, which we've had on Samsung's for many years now, it's the best, you know, um, and it's just quick, fast, accurate. It doesn't brighten the screen up if you're, you know, trying to unlock your phone at night. It's just because it's, it's using, um, you know, ultrasonic waves. It's not using light, which the which optical fingerprint scanners use, right? That's it. The only thing I would say is it's just the screen needs to be awake for you to use it, which is a kind of annoying. On the Samsung, you can just press it. That area, you can just press whenever and it just unlocks, right? Okay, yeah. So that's something that I don't know if they can do that with the software update, but that's something that I would expect and want. No, I, I, I agree. I think for me, what I do like is... I do like the display. I think the display is really solid. Um, I like the battery life, uh, at least just from, yep. from the uses I've seen that the battery life has been very consistent on here. And I have a better appreciation for the gaming. Just hear my words, better appreciation uh, okay. <laughs> for the gaming performance. I think uh, it's gotten better, um, okay. but it's still nowhere close. Okay, so that's, that's one of the things that I, obviously you being the gaming expert could see. With me, I game very little on my uh, on a smartphone, right? So uh, when it comes to performance, you know, in the day to day, let's be honest, Tensor G4 absolutely fine, right? Okay, yeah. you know, you're not going to have any issues going through your apps, you know, having multiple apps running in the background, things like that. It's all well and good, right? The issue I find is, you know, when you are really pushing it and when you compare it to the flagship out there, which is the eight Gen three, right? What do you think? Like, what would you be your verdict on the performance of the Tensor G4? It's two generations behind. I mean, if you run the benchmarks, okay. it, you clearly see that it's 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 close to the Snapdragon H and one, and the GPU difference is staggering. You know, remember it's like back in the days when you used to do GPU tests between iPhone and and Android devices, uh, and they were so big. Now it's it's kind of the same here. And yes, you will see that when you're pushing, uh, even just on certain tasks, because you don't have that GPU there to just kind of help push things along. In terms of gaming, you can play most of your games on here fairly well. The one game that, of course, that immediately just stats running lower is Genshin Impact. You try to play at 60 frames per second. It just, as soon as you start it up, it goes straight to like 32, 40. It doesn't even, it doesn't even pretend to go to 60. It's just like, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> yeah, but, but if you're playing, like if you're playing just most normal games, you can play it on here fine. So it's not a, it's not a thing. Uh, the Vapor Chamber actually is actually pretty decent on there, but I also think it throttles down a little bit, which is why you don't see higher temperatures in, in that regard. But I, I think it's one of those, like most people who are buying the Pixel are not buying for gaming, but they, if they're going to game, they're not going to be hardcore gamers anyway. Um, so mm -hmm. your gaming experience is fine. I think, 
I think the one thing you are right is that they need to get some of that performance balance when you're pushing and just trying to do a lot of things on the device. Uh, because mm. even though they talk about AI and they've talked about on-device AI, at least for the last two years, on-device AI, Snapdragon has been them every single time. Even this year, I'm sure it's mm. probably going to be the case. Um, and they do a lot on the cloud. A lot of the AI activities is definitely pushed to the cloud. Um, yeah. Which to me, it's like, okay, then why make the chip? It, like, that's my own concern is like why do this when you know it's on the cloud yeah i mean i mean the reason why the the tensor g4 maybe isn't as powerful as others because it's like hey we're going to do other stuff in the cloud anyway so what's the point <laughs> maybe i don't know but you know you were saying one of the you know reasons why, why pixel users buy the pixel is not you know necessarily for gaming but one of the things they do buy the pixel for is the ca other cameras right and my experience cameras you know very good they have the processed pixel look, right, which we've talked about before. I personally like it. I like that processed pixel look. It's like sharp, lots of a dynamic range, and you know, they're really punchy pictures, which I personally like. Um, some people kind of find that they're a little bit too over-processed. Um, the zoom camera as well, you know, you've got the 5X um, Televoto zoom camera, really good. Overall, I would say very good cameras, right? Okay, and over the selfie camera as well, you know, you've got the high resolution, so it's quite sharp. I, I find the Pixel tries a bit too hard to try to get skin colors accurate where it kind of does things which are not, which don't look pleasing because, you know, especially if I take a picture with the sunlight in the background, it kind of gives me a very grayish look, right? Which might be accurate based on the, you know, the situation, but it's kind of like, yeah, but I don't want my pictures. I don't want to look gray in the pictures, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like do something to balance that out. So that's one thing that I found. But other than that, I think camera is very, very good. A lot of people have been asking me, Saf, where are the camera comparisons? Well, here's the thing. It's been, a, I've been in a bit of a dilemma because see the Pixel has come out, right? Now, full disclaimer, I have been doing some sponsored content with Google. So, you know, uh, I've had some sponsored Pixel content. So I didn't want to do a review per se because that's something that I was working on alongside. But I did want to do some, compar I did want to do some compar uh, comparisons. Now, you have to remember that traditionally Pixels come out in October, right? So mm -hmm. that's yeah. after the iPhone. So then you've got brilliant. Okay, because most people want to see how the Pixel compares to the iPhone. I've done comparisons of the Pixel versus the Samsung and not that many people are interested, you know, between that comparison. The comparison they want to see is the Pixel versus the iPhone. Now, the problem I've had is that the Pixel has come out before the iPhone this year. So it's kind of like challenging. So if I was to compare the Pixel to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is going to be replaced in a matter of weeks, right? So it's not really worth my while doing a camera comparison which is going to be out of date in like a matter of weeks right so hopefully once the iphone is out we will be doing lots of camera camera comparisons of the iphone versus the s24 ultra as well as versus the pixel so just a disclaimer out there because a lot of people have been like just saying Saf, where is it where is it where is it it's like <laughs> chill chill patience patience yeah no <laughs> I, I i agree i will be be making my famous black test come the iPhone launch. Um, <laughs> Sam is laughing over yep. here like, excuse me, what? Now, um, one of the things that uh, I definitely need to touch on is the price because the price has increased. However, having said that, it is still lower compared to the flagships like the S24 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max, right? Okay, so it's mm -hmm. still about, in, in the UK, it's about 150 pounds less compared to the S24 Ultra, for, for instance, and in the US, I think it's about $200 less, right? So yes, the price has increased, but it is still lower compared to the other flagships. So that's something to keep in mind too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it is. I think, it, I think the biggest thing this year is that they are now three pixels to pick from. Uh, a Pixel 9, 9 Pro, and 9 Pro XL. And I, what I'll find interesting is which is the odd one out, which is the one that most people will go like, mm, not worth picking up. You know, that's that's my most interesting aspect out of out of the three. I, th I think, so here's the thing, here's what I think, right? Is the Pixel 9 Pro XL, okay, there you go. And then you've got the Pixel 9, which are the two sort of extremes. Then you've got the Pixel 9 Pro, which is the device that has pretty much everything, right? It just has a smaller screen and a slightly smaller battery that you've got on the, on, the, on the Pro XL. It's just smaller, right? Now, the thing is, as far as I'm aware, like even if we take the iPhone, for example, when you look at the iPhone 15 Pro and the Pro Max, as far as I'm aware, they sell more Pro Maxes, 
than the pros, right? Okay, yeah. because mm -hmm. you either want a cheap phone that does pretty much everything, but you know, is not too expensive, right? Or you want to go for the everything. You want to go for the big daddy, right? So that's the thing. So the, the one in between kind of gets like a little bit forgotten, shall we say? Now, there will be, don't get me wrong, there is a niche of people who want, okay, I don't want a big phone. I want it to do everything else. That's fine. I just think that you're going to sell more, uh, Google are going to sell more Pixel 9s and more Pixel 9 Pro XLs compared to the Pixel 9 Pro. That's what I think. Yeah, I, I would agree.